Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 759. She said that to me once. Recorded live on November 19th, 2020. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Dust Arm. I am Godzilla T. Ah! Oh, my. That was zombie for uh, I'm DJ. Are you turning into a zombie or is that? Just no, your... I just want to be able to speak the language in the event that we end up with an apocalypse of some kind. That'd be nice. That way you can convince them not to eat your brains. Right. You have a conversation with somebody and you're nice. You talk about culture, their way of living, your way of living. Find that common ground. See if they can kick your ass and grip ball and then you move on. You reason with them. Yeah. I feel yeah. like knowing another language is an important piece of the puzzle. How does one learn zombie language? You watch a lot of The Walking Dead and then try and find any possible way to scare people in a grocery store enough to make them drop their baby. I'm kidding. Please don't do that. I was going to say, <laughs> and how did you conduct this experiment? Mostly in a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> so well, do you watch like, Walmart.com too much? <laughs> <sighs> and we've already got pins doing the, the ellipses again. Okay, we're off to a great start. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just confused. we aim to please. There we go. Well, we've got quite a few uh, good pieces of of news to talk about. We've got lots of updates to MCC. A a bunch of stuff related to MCC that's come out. Uh, So we got some of that to talk about tonight. And we've got another topic, which is things that we really remember and enjoy about Halo 4. Because I think for the most part, most of us really started getting our foot in the door with the Halo community with Halo 4, or at least around that time frame. So I'm, I'm interested to, to talk about it tonight. But as we normally start our shows off with, we have our Podtacular community update. First of all, I just want to uh, point out that over here in the U.S., we had our Veterans Day while we were away. So for those that served or that have served in the military, uh, wherever you are, we thank you for your service. You're welcome. Everything that you do. And DJ, we know that uh, you were part of that. So thank you very much for your service to our country. Not a, not a problem. Uh, we've got our Frag and Friday update with GT from last week. So GT, how did things go? Everything went really well. Uh, we spent most of the night in, uh, uh, in mass making. Uh, and then we jumped into some customs later on in the night. Had a little bit of fun, wrapped it up with a little vehicle fiesta, and almost won. Darn you, King Louie. <laughs> King Louie is the minigame master. Somebody went on a string of kills, and I got the crap luck draw of vehicles. <laughs> I, was, I, I, was ahead, I, was, I was in first place, I was in first place, and then, then I wasn't. But I did wind <laughs> up second, so. Yeah, okay. Anyway, no, we had a lot of fun. Looking forward to doing it again tomorrow night. With a little I'm bit of a thinking, difference. A little bit. Because uh, if, if... I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh-huh, that uh-huh. if uh, MCC is chosen, yeah, we may try try a little cross-play. Uh-huh. Ugh. Uh-huh. And see how that works. Yeah. Because well, uh, that's a thing now. Which is amazing. I haven't got a chance to experience it yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it. I only got to try it during... Well, I don't even know if I technically got to try it during the flight. Because I did the social matchmaking. You can see the input types, but you don't know Mm -hmm. if it's actually cross Yeah, you don't know if it's Xbox or if they're just playing with controller. Right. So, yes, it'll be very interesting to actually try cross-platform. Should we just go ahead and say... I mean, this podcast will be out before or after the game night, probably. But should we just go ahead and say that tomorrow will probably be at Master Chief Collection? 
I don't know. The community hasn't right. spoke of yet. Well, we'll put the poll out. We'll put the poll out. You'll have to find out next next time next podcast. Yes, or tune in tomorrow. <laughs> yes, tune in on Fridays. Yep. Sorry, well, you would have had to tune in last Friday because by the time this is out, it's too late. But the next week could be another MCC opportunity. So could be. You never know. It's all a mystery until you go over and find out over on our Twitch channel. It all depends on how badly they want the armor for Halo 5. There you go. This week got a long ways to go. Yes, yes we do. We'll get into that in just a moment. As far as achieving Halo, uh, we did not do any achievements, but we did Endure, the Endure Challenge. We tried it a couple weeks ago. Uh, We actually got someone on from the Reddit Discord to join us as a fourth because we weren't able to do it the Sunday previous. Uh, We tried it on the Thursday, so we didn't have a podcast last week because DJ was busy and GT had uh, some things that he needed to take care of. So I hopped on, tried to do another an indoor attempt on Thursday. We crashed at the or one person crashed at the end of the second set and one person crashed at the end of the third set. Halo oh. did not want us to work Thursday. It was stressful. And it was all just yes. the easy anti-cheek, like, throwing the flag. is like, game violations. Like, what game violation? Mm. What are you talking about? Come on. So we did this past Sunday. We were able to get through all four sets. So we got the challenge. Got the unlocks. So thanks to uh, P. Jameson, who is the gentleman from the Reddit discord for joining us and helping us get there and we also had alice's pieces and laird on as well cool and pins was there being a cheerleader way to go pins pom-poms and all yes and so is prestige (laughs) nice yeah over on the website we have a another machinima monday post thank you to writing spartan for putting this one up and this one is the codex do either of you remember the Codex Machinima? Yeah. Mm, I can't say that I actually watched it. This one came out shortly after Red vs. Blue came out, and it, and it kind of took a very serious method of doing Machinima in Halo. And next to Red vs. I honestly thought the way that the Codex was done, the storytelling was a lot better, and it's probably one of the best productions of early Halo Machinima that you can find. So if you had not had the chance to go check out the Codex, I highly recommend it. They have a sequel to it called The Heretic, and their storytelling is phenomenal for a Halo Machinima. So, yeah, go check it out. Over on the company commendations, we are still chugging away, as as we will be for a while. If you want to help us chug along, then you feel free to come on over to our company, podtackler.com slash company. We've got another 211 vehicle splatters that we need for our next commendation. And we've still got a total of nine commendations left. So if you want to help us out, we would be more than happy to uh, get you enlisted into our Spartan company for Halo 5. For our Tales from the Foxhole segment, we've got a couple of things from the community to go over. Uh, First of all, MH Cosplay is still posting his regular cosplay armor builds that he's been working on uh, some of some stuff for his own benefit and some things for uh, commissions that he's doing and something recently that he's done too does, are you got either of you aware of an extra life event happening this weekend apparently he's making some armor for no a four fifth extra mm. life stream okay I so maybe it's just a four fifth thing Could be. but he he's been making some armor specifically for a four or fifth extra life event coming up this weekend. So I, I guess we might get some pictures of him in armor, which would be pretty cool. 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 I think it's ODST themed. At least I'm getting that inference because on his laptop or surface, he has ODST as his wallpaper. So Maybe. either way. Yeah. Uh, we've also got, what is, uh, where was this? Prestige has been making some uh, waves in his achievement stuff, so he's he's thanked us for helping convince him or 
yeah, I guess convince him to work on achievements in MCC. And he recently just got the Life Story achievement, which is playing through the Master Chief Saga playlist in MCC. So all 45 Ooh. of those missions in one playlist. Nice. Yeah. Congrats, Prestige. That's awesome. Have either of you guys done the Saga playlist what? yet? Yeah. No, I... So... Uh, I, I think I started with that one. I got early access to H4, so I played through the campaign on Saturday, but that was the last time I opened it. I opened it to see if Griffball was there for Halo 4, and it wasn't, so I turned it off. Well, good news <laughs> is coming up for you then. Or actually, no, it would have been last week. We'll get to that in a second. But, I mean, there was still the achievement on when it first came out for the Xbox. So did you just never go through the, the playlist back then? It's been so long since I've played on Xbox, okay. I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. Well, if you have, be fair, I if have, you have no that idea. achievement in Steam, then you have, you've got it on Xbox. Because all those, thankfully, all those achievements do pop on Steam if you've already yeah. gotten them on Xbox. Yeah, but the pop uh, on Steam is nowhere near as cool as on the Xbox. It's not. It's this little it's window not. over here off to the side. That just me and, and there's no little sound effect out that and makes... meanders in and just yeah, it's like <laughs> <"Stah!"> <laughs> the Xbox achievement. It's right there in your face. They want to make sure next. that you know you've achieved something. <laughs> uh, and then the next thing that we have is from actually, I think that might be it. I'm looking through things. Oh, it's just a little clip from Prestige. He had a little clip from the end of our our stream on Sunday. But other than that, that's what we got for our community update for the week. So thanks everyone for participating in our game nights, uh, following us on our streams, contributing to our Podtacular company company commendations. We appreciate everything that you guys do for the community. What we got coming up for matchmaking updates, GT. Well, for this weekend, we have Griffball rotating in for CE Anniversary Throwback. For next weekend, we have Warzone Turbo going live. Triple Team will rotate in for Griffball. And for the Thanksgiving day or Thanksgiving weekend here in the States, they turn on Global Double XP. Nice. Ah. Very good. So that's how we're going to round up the end of November. Starting off with December, we've got the winter 2021 season starting. Core play will rotate in for triple team. And uh, that's on the weekend of December 3rd. On December 8th, 343 day kicks off global double XP for the holidays. So that will be all of next uh, all of December. Well, most of December nice. at least. And Warzone Turbo, Castle Wars, Holiday Fiesta, Husky Raid, go live for the holidays. So we're going to wow. quite the list of playlists. They're packing it in. I'm True. Very nice. I, I think they're going to think that people have time to play. Well, it's not like and we're leaving our homes because... It, I was <laughs> with the current situation... I'm glad someone uh, said I'm, it. <laughs> yeah. No, the CDC just came out and said, hey, stop traveling, period. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Get get off the plane. Go home. I, I will be playing lots of Halo because I will finally be done with the Halo Mole production and I'll actually have spare time again. There you go. Yeah. YouTube.com slash the Halo Mole if you haven't been following. There you go. Episode 7 comes out this weekend. It's almost done. Uh, for the Master Chief Collection, what do we have, GT? For Master Chief Collection, what we got? Uh, Fiesta joins... The Fray in 4v4 and FFA. Rocket Race is retired until next time. Sad. Uh, yeah. We do have playlist changes on the November 11th, which was uh, a few days past. Uh, the Griffball rotates in. Fiesta moves. When is Griffball rotating in? Uh, that was back on the 11th. It rotated in Friday last week. So. Yeah, because it's still not here. Stop? I've been looking, and it's still not here. Really? Hmm. It says they're yep. supposed to go live on the 11th. Yep. I have not seen it. Well... 343! Three, three. Fix your game! Saying, because Fix I'm looking game. for Halo 4 on there, and I don't see it. But I could just be that it's been rotated out, and they just didn't give us a, hey, hey, here's a thing. Is could Fiesta be, still yeah. there? Well, Fiesta moved yeah. into the Action Shack playlist. 
but if it's well, I'm saying if Fiesta is a standalone option for some reason, then that means it hasn't changed over for Yeah, that's possible. Because Griffball would show up as the gold little icon on the right. Yep, no, but it's definitely not there. That sucks. They don't they change them only on Fridays. Jeez. For we take a week off and it all gets screwed up. Oh. <sighs> what have we done? Yeah. We, no, we, looked, I just looked right now and it's not up there. And I see where they said on the 11th that it rotates in, but I don't think it rotated in for... 3 for 3, DJ needs his Griff Ball. Come on. It's the thing. You know this by now. Monthly Griff Ball rotations. Come on. Come I on. I must have Griff Ball. Yes. Must yes, have. But, you know what? It's about what the community needs, not what I need. So there we go. There is always Griff for All. Also. True. And customs. Yep. Which There's I now have to create. Customs. I have to create that in Halo 4 now. So that's my next my next goal. Did you not do, uh, do the transition from 360 The when they did the migration? What? When they did the file share migration from 360. Oh. Yeah. Honestly, no. No? No. Okay. Every, I, everything I had was, was somebody else's creation. So there you go. I'm but, sure someone's moved it over then. For Griffroll? Oh, okay. I thought no Griffroll. I'm, I made that on Halo Five. Now I got to make it yeah, again okay. here. Okay, you're talking yeah. Griffroll. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. All right, going on into MCC and Dev flight updates. Uh, they have, or I think this is Postums that posted this, but it's a final reminder that legacy user generated content support is the window is closing. So anything that was on your 360 file share got pulled into the new um, user-generated content cloud file share. So anything that you have from 360, you're good. If, if you hadn't played on MCC Xbox, if you can pull it into PC. The thing that they're trying to point out here is if you had any user-generated content that you made on Xbox before they made that update in December last year. So like mm-hmm. if you had stuff on your Xbox and you hadn't turned it on since it came out on PC, you need to launch your Xbox at least just once with launching MCC. That way those files that you had on the Xbox specific file share can get migrated over to this new cloud file share, which they created specifically for MCC to support MCC on PC. Got it. So TLDR, all your 360 stuff should be in the new place. If you had stuff that you made on Xbox, it's in a separate file share that you just need to go into MCC, launch it. It'll move everything over, and then all your files will be set. Cool. Yep. I know there's been some confusion about that in the past, so the way that Postums wrote it made it a little confusing as well, so I just wanted to clarify that for folks listening to the show. Oh, your 360 stuff is fine if you got that migration. It's just if you had anything that was on Xbox One specifically that you want to be able to access on PC. So there you go. Then we've got some Halo 4 launch information. With that, we have Halo 4 coming in with features supporting 60 plus frame rate on PC. We have Season 4 and all new unlocks, tax, text chat filtering, FOV sliders and enhancements for the Xbox Series S and X, cross-play for multiplayer, server region selection for matchmaking, update video settings per title, and new multiplayer offerings for MCC. So that is what we got, or that's some of the stuff that we got for the Halo 4 launch. There's some other things that we'll get to from the official launch post that we have over on Waypoint. Uh, Just as a clarification, cross-play is not supported with campaign or Spartan Ops. Yeah, dumbest thing I've ever heard, but okay. I mean, That's they, the one they... place you want to have crossplay. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. absolutely agree. It's the one place that I would want crossplay is in the campaign and in Spartan Ops so you can play with anybody in your community for doing different types of achievement hunting or going through the... Like, why would you do it for one and not the other? It seems like it would be easier, I would think. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a network engineer for gaming. I would, you know, so it they... is unfortunate that that was not something they could accomplish. Yeah, they said in the the forum post that the technical challenges they were facing to update the net code were just too complex and too yeah. difficult for this. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Although it doesn't necessarily mean they won't keep on trying. 
It just yeah. means for no. this update, it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. But they've done it in matchmaking, so we know at least that part of the process is in place. I'm super excited because mm-hmm. that means we can get into some Rift Ball. Yes. And we're not Rage limited to PC house. or... Yeah. And five months on that sub. Thank you for subbing with your Twitch Prime subscription. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Pins, you're not alone anymore. <laughs> Okay, um, over to Waypoint, we have a new community spotlight that came out a week ago. This one is a little less on content, so there's not as much to go through. It's funny, actually, before the show, GT picked everything that I had picked in, in my subset, so there's re- <laughs> there's really not that much stuff in, in this go-through. That's all but right. We, we can just blow through them. And then... Yeah, we have a couple of, couple of them that we picked out, and of course... Definitely go over to Halo Waypoint. Check out all of the stuff over there for yourself because there's there's lots of good stuff. Even though it's a lot less this time, there's still a lot of good stuff over there. That's not the specific one that they wanted. There we go. Oops. Pushing buttons. Yeah, I clicked the wrong scene transition. <laughs> Oops. Way to go. Way to go. Okay, here we go. So the first one, the creme de la creme, is just amazing because it is the Halo yeah. Infinite Master Chief, but it has a whole bunch of Master Chief quotes that actually make up his armor. Yep. Which the is most genius so piece cool. of art I've ever seen. Yeah. Like having those word collages and like what's the mosaics with like the picture stuff. Those are really yeah. cool. But to do this with just text mm-hmm. is incredible. And now I love that how certain lines that are kind of most common and are most popular stick out, but every every line that's in here is a line from the Master Chief which is just incredible. And people say he doesn't talk. He talks a lot. Well, I mean. <laughs> uh, and this one is made by Darth Fro or Frox. Not sure if you say that X or not at the end there. I was going to say Fro. Darth Fro. So very nicely done. And then we have a snack break. This is by Ben Rollins, this is a one-man band doing a rendition of the Halo theme. I don't know if you got a chance to see that DJ or not. Not sure if it's quite your style, but I figured you might be at least intrigued by it because it's it's one person using some kind of musical gear to do like the sound repeats and the looping, that kind of stuff. All the looping? Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Uh, and we've got, I think, only five or so picks here for the, the, the ones that we wanted. The first two, I think, are, the first two that were in the post are ones that we picked. So the first one is a reflection of Cortana and the Ark in Master Chief's visor and they're out in space, which looks really cool. GT, both you and I really liked this one. Mm-hmm. It has that kind of comic-y Master Chief and Cortana vibe to it. I don't know if we've seen that one before, Pins. I I think it's inspired by another piece of official artwork. So that might be where it's you're seeing some similarities. And yes, it's Halo 4 armor. And that one is the Master Chief and Cortana by the Bolded Yellow. The next one that we liked was One Final Effort by... W Alpha Games, and this one's just funny. It is mass. This is at the <laughs> the very end of the Covenant, where you're stopping Truth from finding the rings. And Master Chief's playing the piano, playing a grand piano. Yes, a grand piano. And the arbiter's arbiter's about to throw the piano onto Truth while Master Chief's playing the piano. Definitely go check it out. It's yes. Fun. One final effort by W Alpha Games. It is it's great. I really like it. And then we have Stroll Through the Woods by Squeezy Ka or Squeezy Cha. And it is another little Mega Constructs minifig scene, which I'm really fond of those. And then finally, in celebration of Veterans Day, we have appropriately titled Veterans Day by More Shots. More Shots has made quite an appearance on the Halo community spotlight. And it's a really well done piece of Master Chief holding a US flag 
in a very kind of war-torn, shadowy, smoky nighttime scene. And then it wouldn't be the spotlight at the end of 2020 if there wasn't a whole bunch of Among Us related stuff. And in our little note thing, I just said the Among Us section because there's there is a whole section that oh, yeah. Sam put in this time mm-hmm. for the Among Us stuff. Well, oh, Among like, Us is hilarious. I love it. I absolutely love it. Every time GT plays on his stream, I try to join in. I try to edge my way in every time you play on stream. GT, so, not GT. What did I say? You, you say GT, yeah. Oh, jeez. Whenever DJ plays, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, those are our top picks. Abbreviations are hard. When it's the same two letters and they're similar letters, it's eh, whatever. Yeah, D and G, they're they're yeah, they're like brothers. They sound similar-ish. Anyway, Next. those are our picks from the community update. Please go check it out. There's lots of good other content on there. Those are just our top picks for this week. And I'm sure we'll see lots. I know it doesn't equal okay pens. Jeez. can never catch a break with you, with you guys. He's <laughs> breaking out the algebra there. Jeez. <laughs> All right. I, whoa, there's a lot of W's that just got added to that link. That's my bad. I didn't realize I was touching that button. <laughs> Over on the release for Halo 4 on PC, uh, we kind of went through some of the stuff and from the forums, which covered some of the stuff that they had were saying it was coming beforehand, but they have an official post with some additional things that they brought over, including HDR support for Xbox Series X and S, if you are uh, playing on Xbox. I am pretty much going to stay PC exclusive because all the stuff that I'm interested in is probably going to be on PC from here on out. Season 4 adds 70 plus unlocks across 50 different tiers. Wait, 50 tiers? Dang. Oh, oh, because there's... Okay, 10 tiers per... Gotcha. Uh, 60 f- FPS for four-player f- four split-screen performance on the X and S, which is cool. 4K and up to 120 FPS for single and two-player split-screen modes for Series X. And 1080p up to 120 frames per second for single and two-player split-screen modes for Series S. So you're getting quite a performance boost with the new Xboxes on MCC. So there you go. There is an associated press kit, so if you want to download all those nice screenshots and key art that they have for the launch of Halo 4 on MCC, you can go over and get those over on the Waypoint forums. And then we have a community update, which just dropped a couple of hour, hours ago, actually. I'm happy to say that there's nothing new there that we haven't missed. Yep. Good. So... Over on the social posts, we have a couple of things to go over. We have a couple of Halo anniversaries. DJ, would you like to take the first couple of social posts? So, sure. So, 16 years ago, on November 29th, we first listened through Rock and Metal and Time. Happy birthday, Halo 2. 19 years ago, on November 15th, uh, they were just getting started. Happy birthday to the game that started it all. Halo Combat Evolved. There we go. Two Halo birthdays. The first two, two Halo them. birthdays. Yep. November 9th, November happy 15th. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy now, birthday. Happy birthday to you. Ideally, they strike. should just release games on November 7th because then it would be coming out on 117. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Ah. November 7th would have been a Saturday this year. I'm not saying that I want it to come out November 7th next year, but. Nope, November 7th is a Sunday. Dang it. <laughs> we just doable. need November 7th to land on a Tuesday. Since that seems to be when Halo releases their games. Or, you know, they can go against the grain. And What if they released it on 7-Eleven? <laughs> January 17th is not a bad one, too. Yeah. That's a good point, Pens. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, Kickass, it's a, it's a little late for you. Mr. Jamis. Jamis. Yep. The see you, got- dude. You say you have a question from Fuchs for me, Pens. I, I, I know you were on their podcast last week, so uh, if, go ahead and type up your question, and we'll get to it. Um, the Grassroots Partner application is now open until December 11th, so if you want to join the likes of Real Life Spartan, Lady Echidna, Mitt Blitz, 
Uh, and those other uh, streamers over there, you feel free to go over to halo.gg slash grassroots and apply for the partnership. When will we be doing Halsey's Journal? When pigs fly. Uh, Halo 5 Pro Series Tournament. Uh, open tournament number one happened this past weekend, and Halo posted all of the region winners over on their Twitter. So if you are interested in uh, following that, you can head on over to their Twitter, see the results, or feel free to go listen to our friends over at HCS Pro Talk who break down week by week everything going on in the competitive Halo scene. They do a really good job at breaking down rosters, going over tournament results, and they are just really great at that. So I I will not try to te- tread on their turf where they've really come through and done a good job. So head on over to HCS Pro Talk and, and check them out. Sketch posted over on Reddit. They have a weekly discussion thread over on Reddit, and he has shared with the community that there will not be any Halo Infinite being revealed at the VGAs this year. I know a lot of folks were wanting to see some stuff, and that's usually a place where lots of announcements are made. Um, unfortunately, we just are not going to see anything. They don't have anything ready. But they do want sh- to show us stuff. They they have come out and said that they... and. Unishek even mentioned this in the update today. They're working together to try to have some other kind of bigger discussion point at the end of this year. So it won't be VGAs, but we should hear some more infinite stuff before the year's out. So at least we got stuff coming. We've there's We're always, always stuff coming. I know. I know. Like. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Trying to put the the minds of these. The game is coming. Yes. Yes, it is. People just need to be patient. And they need to stop panicking. There we go. Yep. <laughs> if you want to get MCC now, since it is fully complete on PC, then you can head on over to aka.ms slash get Halo MCC. It's available on Xbox, as it has been for the past six years. It's also available on the Windows Store and Steam. So go over and get your copy now if you've been waiting for everything to come out. We might be... uh trying to give away a copy of that for the holidays since uh, our plans for trying to give away an Xbox series X and S have been foiled from low stock. <laughs> so yeah. we, we might do a couple of MCC and Halo Wars two giveaways this holiday season in its place. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Showtime recast Cortana with Jen Taylor. Breaking news. Yes. Hold on. You can't recast the voice of Cortana. You mean they fixed what they screwed up on in the first place? Congratulations! The original <laughs> voice of Cortana is Cortana, Jen Taylor. <laughs> it's not our fault your casting people are idiots, but congratulations on fixing something that shouldn't have been broken in the first place. Neat. <laughs> to be fair, with with TV shows, there are contracts in certain places where you have to go from a certain pool of people. To be fair, I don't give a f- It's Cortana. Don't <laughs> don't mess don't with Cortana. Don't mess with Cortana. Like it's you Cortana. Say the same thing about they, Steve. Steve Downs is you, a part of it. If you have you heard the voice of Cortana Windows Ted, it's abysmally not her. No, it's not. And they try and be like, it's just like Cortana. No, it's not. No. Nope. It doesn't sound anything like her. Cortana's a lot smarter and a lot more <laughs> And useful. Cortana's useful. And snarky. Yep. Sometimes I like a little more intel with my intel. I say that to Cortana on Windows 10. You know what she says? I have no response to that. It's because you're not her. Exactly. <laughs> but but to follow up on that, uh, due to scheduling co- twitch. <laughs> uh, due to scheduling conflicts caused by the pandemic, uh, Natasha McElhone, who was playing. Halsey and Cortana no longer complete her work as Cortana, but will continue her role of Halsey. Probably because they realized, hey, guess what? You don't sound anything like Cortana. Which means she's not going to sound anything like Halsey either. Oh, well, you know, there's already been some casting confusions about things like that. And while I understand that there is creative license to create new and take things in a new direction, when you have something like a franchise that has been established for 20 years, and I'm sorry to say this, when you have a franchise that has been established for 20 years, you stick with people who are true to represent the character in the best way possible. You you do. Otherwise, you break continuity, and it removes the viewer's opportunity to experience immersion 
within the universe that you are trying to create in a real world viewable experience. You can't do that if Master Chief is colored pink and he's four foot three and and he's not carrying a sniper rifle or an AR or a gravity hammer. He's, you know, carrying a small wooden block with a slingshot. Like you can call him Master Chief. It's not. But let's go ahead and make a show around it. <laughs> yep. I know that was an extreme analogy, but I'm just saying. We had two sticks and a rock and we had to share the rock. Oh, right. Exactly. So Samuel Not the Hunt Johnson. Oh, damn it. Yep. You're making it make me cry. Yeah. Is that about that still emotional moment? There's lots of emotional moments in Halo. Yes. Especially Speaking in Halo of, 4. Yes. Yes. Yes, there are. We should definitely get to that part of the game. We we are getting we're getting to that part. I'm trying I'm trying to go through these as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um on ignore them. <laughs> Just ignore right. them. Right. We'll throw it down on a list. Right. You can link it if you want. All right. Speed there we go. Uh, <laughs> on a related note, they are back in production. The Halo Showtime Twitter account put out a picture with Pablo Schreiber, who is playing the Master Chief in front of his trailer with an appropriate Master Chief mask on. With yeah. Half, half a Master Chief helmet on. Right. Exactly. The half of the Master Chief yep. helmet on. Yep. Why not the Lots top of... half? Why the bottom half? I mean... Social distancing and proper masking? Didn't want to get the camera person. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, on the product side of things, we have quite a few things that have dropped. We have the Halo 4 mouse pad. We have the Seagate Master Chief Limited Edition game drive for Xbox that comes in 2 gig, or sorry, 2 terabyte and 5 terabyte flavors. All Which the 5 terabytes. Obsolete. Kind of. Uh, I did buy the two terabyte one because it looks pretty cool. Uh, all the five terabyte ones. Uh, so pins. I ordered mine on Tuesday from the Microsoft store. The two terabyte was not sold out yet. The five terabyte was. So I don't know if there's other places where those are being sold. I think they might be being sold on Amazon as well. I think the five terabytes were out, but the two terabytes were still in stock there. I bought off the Microsoft store because it was actually cheaper than Amazon by really just by a couple of bucks. Like Amazon uh, had it for, I think, ninety nine dollars and the Microsoft store had it for ninety four nineteen or something like that. You know, if so, I'm buying a two terabyte drive for one hundred dollars, I'm going to get a six, ter- six terabyte drive anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Drive. I, 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 I like Master Chief. I don't like getting raped for Master Chief. I mean, I don't know if that's a good enough reason to use the R word, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I've been royally screwed with how much Halo stuff is currently filling my house. So, well, the the, the a lot most of the stuff that's in the Halo u- the universe, it's not something that you can that has a specific purpose, like a hard drive does. Like, a Funko Pop is still a Funko Pop. You know, your little Nerf Blasters are still just Nerf Blasters. Your posters, they're they're posters. They don't serve another purpose. I get you. I get you. It's like the Master Chief controllers that they bought, that that they had available, they didn't cost any more than the regular controllers. But yet, a a two-terabyte drive is half again as much because it has Master Chief on it. It just doesn't make a, make a sense to me. It's basically everything ever made by Razer. Yeah. It is Seagate. Yes, I mean, you also get a lot true. of cheaper hard drives from Western Digital. <laughs> and I it's mean, I guess some Seagate from stuff Western is Digital. Cheaper. Anyway, next. Anyways, yep. We've got the Halo Gear Holiday 2020 shopping guide from Xbox.com. Buy one of everything. <laughs> right. So there's uh, there's a new Oni hoodie, or not Oni hoodie, but Oni uh, long sleeve. There's obviously all the Mega Construct stuff, like the uh, the Scale of Energy Sword, the Master Chief Helmet, the Halo Ring, which I still need to finish building that out. The Nerf Blaster, the Funko Pops, the Dark Horse statue, which I believe is the limited edition statue that's going to come with the game as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff over over there. We've also got a new post from the Mega Constructs account for the Halo Mega Constructs Banished Ghost set. 
and the rebuild features a turret with a uh, deployable cover in the style of Banished as well. Over on the community highlight side of things, we have our Halo 3 Forge the Fight contest results. I actually dropped into a couple of their streams when they were doing the uh, playtesting with Unishek and Blaze and Nated, and they were doing some of their judging as well. We have two honorable mentions, uh, which are tagged as their fifth and fourth place, who are going to receive a Forge Hub t-shirt, which is Basilisk by D-Door. And Traumatica by Danger Tanner. Third place is Main Stage by Sam Malone XBL. And that person got $300 in the Forge Hub t-shirt and a 12-month Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Code from 343. Second place is Gauntlet by Cerveza and the Grim Dealer. Uh, they get $700, a t-shirt, and Game Pass Ultimate. And first place goes to Carnival by D-Door. $1,000, a Forge Hub t-shirt, and 12 months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. There's a little YouTube video done by Bacon Media who goes over the, uh, the maps, kind of including some gameplay as well. Talks a little bit about the top three on what they do well, what, what strengths they have, what weaknesses they have. So if you want to go check out those maps, then head on over to ForgeHub.com. And you can click on the pictures for all those maps and give them a try yourself. And then we've got an article from Herospis. I just want to gush about what Halo 4 means to me. So Herospis is no stranger to being a avid fan of Halo 4 and really a lot of the stuff that 343 has done with the narrative of Halo. So uh, he really likes Halo 4. So if you want to see him gush about the Halo 4 and all the stuff that really excites him about it, feel free to go over and check it out. On the community content side of things, we've got podcasts and podcasts and more podcasts. We've got two new episodes from HTS Pro Talk. We've got episode 225 and 226 of Podcast Evolved and two more mission debriefs from Halo Wars 2. We've got Finish the Fight episode 46, which is Halo 5 Guardians Part 2. And we've got uh, three new episodes from the Sacred Icon. Halo, folks. And then a little special announcement. Fudcast number 37 happened. It's titled Banished Metal Bands. And Pins was a guest on that show, believe it or not. Congrats, Pins. Well that, done, sir. Is that your podcasting debut, Pins? Because I don't know if we've actually had you on this show, which now yeah, I kind of feel been bad. On this show tw- he's been on this show Has he? twice. Okay. Matter of fact, he was on the same podcast that I debuted on. Oh. <laughs> he says, I don't know why, but they asked me. Hey. That's cool. I mean, you 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 are really into the lore stuff and the whole spreadsheet that you do of tracking all the Halo events. That, that's that's commitment. That's insanity. What so. is what that is? <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't going to say it, but I will. You did. You did. <laughs> uh, lots of YouTube stuff. Um, next thing. Or a couple of things I want to point out is Halo Cannon has his uh, introductory Halo 4 type stuff. So he goes over the audio logs and terminals, has his monthly recap that he did for October. Ascend Hyperion is doing a State of Halo survey series. So if you want to help be a, a stat in his research, then he has three different uh, forums that you can fill out where he's gathering kind of just general information. General Heat is always up to his his crazy antics of trying to see how you can break Halo. <laughs> so lots of good stuff over there. And a couple of things from Team Respawn about the Halo Wars 2 Xbox Series X update and what he would like to see happen with Halo Wars 2 in the future. Uh, we've got some more community artwork from Archangel or Binoski. He's done a lot of stuff with... Halo 4 coming to MCC recently, so feel free to go on over and check that out. We've got some new stuff from Tom Jurassic with his Mega Constructs figures. A new one from Cold Protocol. Uh, Ezel VFX. Lots of stuff from Grey Wolf, who actually, um, he had some of his stuff on the spotlight this week. And Halo VFX has been turning out some stuff, too, for his little... Halo VFX series that he's doing. It's Operation... Uh, I forget what it is. It's the one that we 
drooled over that was in the spotlight like a, two months ago or something like that. Over on the community musing side of things, we've got two new Halopedia Trivia Tuesdays. DJ, would you like to take those? Let's see. So, the Community Tuesdays. Look. Wait, what? The Trivia Tuesdays. I have. And the Community Here we go. There you go. Yes. So, did you know that during Season 1 of Hunt the Truth, several community members were made into characters in the Halo universe by sending in voice clips? I did not know that. Who were those people? Uh, I know Green Skull was one of them. That was one of yep. the voices I recognized. Uh, I think Halo Cannon got in there. Really? Yeah. Good for him. Yep. Uh, I don't remember some of the other ones. I thought, um, actually, the SoundCloud collection is actually gone. So yeah. CAA is actually working to make an archive on that of that over on Halopedia. But it it was played in... Episode five of Hunt the Truth, I think where like Ben Dro got all of those voicemails. So some of that collection was in the actual episode itself. But three for three made a separate place where you could go and actually hear all the separate voicemails that he received. Hmm, interesting. It was a really cool way to have the community engage with what Hunt the Truth was doing because, let's be honest, Hunt the Truth is probably one of the best pieces of marketing that's ever happened to the Halo franchise. Yeah. All right, and Halopedia's Trivia Tuesday Part 2 is, did you know that the antimatter bomb from Halo 2 was set to appear in Halo Wars 2, but it was cut? It was in the files under DLC 2, the internal code name for the pack, including Arbiter and Jerome. Also, I did not know that. things I did not know. Yeah. Nice. They always have little nuggets of interesting factoids that... Yeah. The first one I knew about, the second one I did not. You learn something new every day. Halo 5 reached 5,000 followers over this past week on Twitter. So congrats on the milestone. And there we go. a little known fact for the Steam takeover for Halo 4's release day on Steam, Pixel Flare actually animated the Halo 4 key art for what was on the Steam, cool. uh, the Steam store page, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's it expected. He's kind of in, incredibly talented. Yes. Yes, he is. Three for three, hire him. <laughs> I mean, I know the commissioning stuff from him because he's making some of the official stuff, but hire the guy. <laughs> it's time to talk some Halo 4. All uh, right. We love Halo 4. There we go. Yeah. The bestest Halo game ever. <laughs> Halo 4 came out. It's on PC. Check your MCC loads. It's free with Game Pass. And uh, yeah, or you can continue playing it on your Xbox, which has been there for years. Great. Thanks for watching. Bye. But now no. it has some it has some added features to it now, at least. What? So it's not exactly the same. There's some added features now. And yet we still don't have Griffball. Yeah, about that. Call it three. I also three. don't have my I don't have my ricochet armor. Mmm. Yeah. There's a lot of things I don't have. Well, I wonder if that's in the se- I wonder if that's in the season content. Possible. I I think the one thing I was looking forward to. And I'm not saying this derogatorily. The one thing I was looking forward to was A, my ricochet armor, and B, being able to finally play campaign and especially Spartan Ops with people across the globe, no matter whether they're playing on PC or Xbox. Both of those are not options. So, okay. Yeah. Well, the first one might be. We don't know that yet. So, might be unlikely, yeah, and, but we don't know that yet. Yeah. And yeah, you're not wrong, Prestige. Halo 4 Lasso is a pain in the ass. Absolute pain in the ass. To be quite I frank. I Halo 4 Lasos were one of the easier ones compared to like CE and Halo 2. On Solo? No. On Solo, those knights, they skip, jump, and warp right in front of you, and they shank you right in the belly. They cut you in half. They touch you in the no-no zone, and there is no doll left to show where it touched you because it disappears and warps back to wherever. It's awful. You did solo Lazo in two days, Prestige? Lazo? <clears throat> that over 32 hours of gameplay to get that through. Now, mind you, mind you, Chief Jeez. Canuck and I played that. We were on the early access group, so we got oh, no, it on. No, you didn't on... do Lazo, did you? you just we legendary. did Heroic. We did okay, Heroic. heroic. Yeah, right? not Lazo. Okay. It took, so the two of us on Heroic, we managed to get through that in, I want to say we started at noon. We go through it in five and a half hours. That's a, that sounds about average. Yeah. 
Um, but granted, now five and a half hours using a lot of tricks because I know I've played that campaign. That's the one thing. Halo 4 came out ages ago. And I played that game a bajillion times because it was the game that I played when I was recovering from my surgeries after the car accident. I couldn't walk for nine months, so I just played Halo constantly. And one of the things that I absolutely adored about Halo 4 when it came out on the 360 was the lobbies. You had your lobby cards up there on the screen. You could talk to the other players in lobby, get a lot of good, you know, a lot of good talking. Um, you could actually get to know people. In fact, there are a lot of players that I became friends with because I was so talkative because I was very hard pressed for human interaction at that point. And so I constantly was talking to people and I met Barbie V down and Brittany, uh, um, and 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 Brittany and then all the other players who are from the Griffball Hub and more just because from talking to them, they've taken that feature out. It didn't follow over in MCC for PC for for Xbox one or the Xbox one X. It didn't come over in here like granted the toxicity of the community is a horrific thing. But what they did bring with them was an opportunity to continue improving and building upon a game and and the very first iteration of Halo for 343's team as an independent group separate away from Bungie, which was really interesting. And I wanted to, like, no matter what, when Halo 4 came out on the 360, it had graphics like I'd never seen before. There was beauty in the artwork that was so extraordinary that you found yourself stopping mid-run, mid-walk, mid-campaign, looking at things going, wow, the mountains, the trees, that one alleyway before you come out into the first opening where you see the Forerunner world. There's a couple other spots where you're walking and realizing, holy crap, this is incredible. And it's on the 360 of all things. Yeah. Now playing it. So we played it. I played it in 1440p at 144 hertz, 144 frames per second. And it on on highest settings with the enhanced graphics. And it looked breathtaking. Not one problem. I had a couple spots where the effects were so loud you couldn't hear the voices. And when you go ahead and you pull and you get to the all the different info nodes where you pull up all the Forerunner lore that comes up. First of all, love that. Love not having to go to the Halo channel for that. That's yeah. awesome. However, the volume for those videos is different than the volume of the game. And you have to be very cognizant of that as a streamer because suddenly you're blowing everybody who had headphones on <laughs> out of the room. Yeah. Including yourself. Yeah. I was hey, like, DJ, ah! <laughs> the, uh, OBS has a setting. It's called a limiter. Yeah. <laughs> I call that my mute button. He has a, he has a self-imposed limiter. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> also true. Yeah. yeah. Halo, Halo 4 was, it did a lot of new things for the franchise because it's 343. They're not Bungie, so yep. they have a different vision to extend or continue on what Bungie did because at mm -hmm. the time that Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach came out, they were just wanting to they, they had enough out. with Halo. Yeah, they, yeah. they wanted out. Not, they wanted not to get to, on to developing. Not, all, not all of them. The, the Halo team stayed, but yeah. Right. And, and not to say that ODST and Reach weren't, weren't good games, because ODST loved the campaign and loved Gorgeous. Firefight. Yeah. And Reach, I mean, the way that it played out with the Spartan 3s, the storyline was, was wonderful, and the music was, was great. Mm -hmm. It was a great way of saying goodbye. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like all, reach, all, reach uh, out of things. all the games, Halo Four to me was the prettiest game. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean of all the Halo games, including Five. I agree. Yeah, so far it has been the prettiest game. I've in, I enjoyed the aesthetic of it. I enjoyed the detail in the levels and in the you know in the background images and all that. It just it was absolutely amazing that they were able to pull that off on the 360 no less and then to go to halo 5 which don't get me wrong halo 5's got decent graphics but to me halo 4's are better i think there was a better there was a larger focus in halo 4 it looked like there was a larger focus in halo 4 on the foliage in the artwork the mountains the rocks mm -hmm. and there was your initial introduction to the forerunners really uh by like by their their presence alone which, a lot more exposure. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. you add that into the beautiful storyline that is the eventuality at the end, and of course, if you haven't seen or know what's a, what I'm about to talk about, 
Um, can you please get your shit together? Because honestly, Halo 4 happened ages ago. Cortana dies. So <laughs> yeah, it's been eight years. I I, I don't think there's any room I'm not for spoilers spoiled, yeah. here. There's there's no room for spoilers here. So so feel free. You hit the end of that game. You're bawling your freaking eyes out, and in the process of all of this, they are integrating and introducing so many different new storytelling elements. So when you look at the landscape of it all, not only do they introduce new movement mechanics, obviously, and new weapons, they've also got a, a, a myriad of different educational pieces in the process of this, understanding how she modified his armor, understanding all these little nuances that kind of previously just went untalked about. You got to see some a larger presence of the UNSC fleet and a little more of a personalization. You really get a chance to hate and I, I hate, you know, a, a hashtag Captain Del Rio. You suck. <laughs> You're like, dude, that yeah. guy was in, that guy was a dick. Sorry. He filled his role well. Yeah. No, he no did. kidding. He did. <laughs> but it also was the game where they had great marketing. You had Hunt the Truth going on in there. We had for Halo 4, you had the the Spartan Ops. It's led off with a film. Like they had an actual film. I mean, it was a web series at first, but it came out as a final film. Uh, but you had uh, Ford Under Dawn, which was the lead up and intro and takes you into the actual opening of Halo 4, which was incredible. And as you're putting all of this together before the lead into Halo 4, bam. You bring it in. They did it right. They did it with a web, a film series. They did it with the storyline. And then they popped in with Spartan Ops and kept you going. It wasn't released immediately. You had to work for it. You had to watch the films, the video pieces for Spartan Ops. And then you'd go through and play the pieces. Now, I don't know if they've included the videos from the Spartan Ops videos, those intro video pieces in the game yet, because I haven't gone through and gotten the Spartan Ops. I'm kind of waiting to do that with Kick-Ass Jamis. Um, and and also with Noble TV. But those elements, as they pushed them out, allowed you to keep your hype going, keep the interest going. You couldn't just bang through it. You had to ace yourself. And it kept the engagement level high. So I loved that because it was a different style than what they had done before in the way of telling a story. But they also were utilizing elements that had previously been successful from Bungie while forging a new path. I thought that was really creative and really well handled. Was it perfect? No. No, it wasn't. Hey, kids. <laughs> but <laughs> as a game, like it was it was a standard for a very long time. You know, it it transitioned us between consoles for the Griffball community who didn't have Griffball for Halo 5 for a, for, a, for a while. It kept us engaged in the game and kept us on the game and kept Griffball going for multiple 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 seasons even when the sandbox on h5 forge broke griff ball and we had to go back to halo 4 for a while yeah when you bring up a good point with the spartan ops stuff because i think that's something that could allude to what we could see in infinite with yeah the expansive campaign and more iterations of it being delivered the more and more we look at infinite more and more it looks like we're going to see this continuation of a like a platform service so we are going to get right campaign expansions we are going to get new multiplayer stuff and new customizations new armor all that good stuff so well I'm, i think yeah. spartan ops is a really interesting fundamental addition to what halo could be and we've only seen it once with spartan ops and halo 4 but the fact that it continued the story that we got to see in the campaign and it still played a direct role and you got to see how the story continued to evolve like that campaign DLC type stuff I'd love to see. Well, and it gives you a it gives you a chance. It gives them a chance to really engage with players. If you think about it in that sense of once you clear your core, you they're creating the baseline, right? They've got the baseline for infinite engaged. And once it's done and ready, there's your core. There's your game. And then you start adding. You, the studio has a chance to go and work on bug fixes obviously. But then put groups, This you're on this DLC, you're on this DLC, you're on this DLC, so they can start getting them ready and releasing and start pushing forward a rotating, continuous content evolution that is not only something that can be listed as add-ons or purchasables, but also can be something that we look forward to. 
We know we've got a scheduled monthly DLC release or every six weeks, you've got a new series to the campaign that's coming out that's got a video piece. It's in-game, in-engine footage. There are infinite opportunities Mm -hmm. with infinite. And when the stuff was coming out, I remember that we did a podcast for each episode of yeah. Spartan Ops because Dude, we loved it so that much. They were so good, though. The stories yeah. were so good. Yeah. What happened to those videos, by the way? Uh, we didn't do videos. We just did... No, no. I mean, the vi- you remember the video pieces that came out, right? You mean for the Ops? introductory to each episode, right? And the... Yeah. Well, there was a... There was a, There's a video, video I think piece. I think there was an extra... There was an outro video for each episode. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if those are in the game still. They Should might be. be. They might be behind like the first. Uh, it's not episode. What's what's the first chapter? It might be in the first chapter of each episode. I'm so if you start literally the first pulling chapter, up the game right now to see if it's on. Yeah. So, so check to see <sighs> if the first chapter, like if yeah. you go into the first chapter of the episode, if it plays. Because I know yeah. in the Halo Four UI you could do it as a separate thing, but it might be contained. It would it wouldn't make sense for them to leave it out because there's substantial stuff there that leads into what you're actually going through. So well, it yeah, wouldn't make sense to just leave that out. Describe what you're doing in the mission. Yeah. yeah, but that story stuff, like even around that, was really, really cool. And to, well, to Halo see that Four, go. you know, like we said, it, it introduced a lot of stuff we'd never seen in a Halo game before, and you know, everything. I really enjoyed Halo Four. You, know, it all in all, it was a great game. I, you know, I understand people didn't like it because it wasn't Halo 3. Well, then play Halo 3. I don't care. Exactly. Not- I, I enjoyed Halo 4 <laughs> for what it was. Did I agree with the kill streaks? No. But it still, it didn't affect the way the game played to me. It still was fun to play. And it's a lot more faster paced, which is all the first person shooters these days are so fast. Mm-hmm. Well, I actually enjoyed Halo 4's multiplayer more than I enjoyed Halo 3's. Halo 3, for me, as I've said many times before, is my worst multiplayer. It's the one I, I despise the most. And I'm right there with you. You know, even with the updates that they've made in MCC, I still can't hit, the, in Halo 3, I still can't hit the broadside of a barn with that damn BR. I, I don't know what Ooh. it is. I just, I never have been able to use the weapons in Halo 3 in multiplayer correctly. It's because it's a fundamentally different system than every other Halo game. Yeah. Technically it is. Real quick on the Spartan Ops fact. Uh So if you go in here, um, once you get to Spartan Ops in the, go into the campaign menu, you'll, for Halo 4, and then you'll see down below on Halo 4, there's a Spartan Ops option on PC. If you look down on the very bottom, you've got back, main menu, options, and career, and then it says watch episodes. When I click on the watch episodes, uh, sure enough, it's got departure, artifact, Catherine, Didax, hand, uh, memento more, scattered, invasion, expendable, key, exodus, and the epilogue. So we've got, okay. so all, you're, you're capable of watching all of these. And I think that's, that's a, could, probably something I will do on stream as well, is to go through and watch all of these and play through them in order as a whole separate campaign opportunity. Because really, it's its own campaign in theory. And not have to watch them on the Halo channel. Also true. <laughs> I swear to God, don't get me wrong, the only thing that was great about the Halo channel back then, okay, was that... There was something great about the Halo channel? Yes, their music. The theme music that they had in the Halo channel was breathtaking. It sounded beautiful. It was incredible. It was soothing. Provided you I remember can see- to turn the volume down before you launched it. Also true. It was loud <laughs> as crap. It was ridiculous, but it was awesome. I loved it. The concept was interesting to have a lot of that extra video stuff that to kind of have a place where you can consume some of that media. The concept was interesting. It's just the interface never worked. Yeah, I understand the theory worked. behind the, the, the Halo yeah, channel. it was but so much I, process. I really enjoyed Waypoint yeah. better. Yes. Was there a Waypoint app? On yes. 360, there was. I actually still go and launch it every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, waypoint, the Waypoint integration with the game was a lot deeper. It had, it had the ability to deliver videos just like the Waypoint did, or the Halo, the Halo Channel did. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That takes me back to the... Remember the original 
Halo Waypoint opening stinger. Uh huh. Yeah. I have missed that so much. Yep. But, you know, I, I just, it really saddened me when they shut down the Waypoint app because we lost a lot of things in the Waypoint app when they shut that down that didn't transfer over into the, the Halo channel. Yeah. The funny thing, I believe the app still works. There's still some backend services which you can tie into and grab stuff. It doesn't grab anything for Halo 5, obviously, but if you were to go into Halo 4, you could still enter in those codes into that console mm-hmm. and you can still get stuff, the bonus XP for Halo 4 and the unlockables. Yeah. So the app still works. It just doesn't have anything well, I modern mean, there's, on it. Yeah, there's no... There's no, they're not updating any videos that were on it. Right. You're, I don't, I, I honestly, I don't even think it doesn't even pull your stats from your, the API anymore either. Probably not. Confal. I, I haven't checked. GG, but. dude. Thank you, Confal. 16 months at tier one. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. But that's beside the point. Anyway, Halo 4, they did a lot of good things with Halo 4. It had an awesome story. The multiplayer was a little weak. I, I will admit that. Although, to be fair, it had some really interesting new game modes to it. Yes, it did. And in my eyes, Halo 4's multiplayer matured very well. Mm-hmm. I liked what they did with it as they got to know uh, the game a lot better. The one thing I've noticed that, and especially since we've gone to this live model with games where you know the games are available to be updated by the developers that you know a lot of games get a lot more refined than they they start mcc is a perfect example of that it's a shining example of that mcc is a special case i'm you know i'm talking you know back in the days when you just buy buy a game you get a disc, you play it. The experience never changed. Yeah. And the thing that was like you know, once, only 15 years ago. Yeah. Once you purchased a game, it never changed. It was the same forever. If there was a bug in it, it was there forever. It, it, the bug was never going to leave. Or if there was an imbalance in something, it was always going to be there. But I've noticed since we went to the, you know, really since Xbox Live became a thing for consoles, I know that PCs have had live service a lot longer, but I've noticed that a lot of games go through kind of an aging project process where, you know, they just get refined a little bit at a time. And sometimes it's just small tweaks. And with Halo 4, there were a couple of major tweaks. But a lot of them were just little changes, like with the DLC packs for them. And I, yeah. I, th- I just really liked the way it, liked the way it aged. Yeah, I thought it did really well. And then yep. they came in, and there's still the multiplayer DLC, and we got the second half of Season 1 for mm-hmm. Spartan Ops, so continued content there. And we got the uh, Ricochet game mode. Yep. Yes. Which modified came, version of, of Griffball, basically. Mm-hmm. Which actually implemented a couple new features that I believe the Griffball community used. Yeah, actually, competitive Griffball was maintained in the Ricochet game mode, but using Griffball because of the because of the stats, the way the stats were recorded, it gave us a much wider, a much larger, I would say more def- more refined way of looking at how we were playing and what we were doing. It also gave us different levels of achievements and also provided a slight variation in the what we had for options in the physics of the game. But like the ball, the ball in Griff Ball, the bomb, it operates differently than it did than in any other game. And it was wonderful because it added a passing feature that was mm-hmm. so it added such a massive complexity to how the game was played. And it was incredible. You could actually block tosses with hammers in the air. So we had everything from assassinations to you name it all throughout there. Sprinting, no sprinting or limited sprint. We just turned the sprint on. We're like, just go for it because the maps were big enough that you needed to. Mm -hmm. But we needed those oversized maps because you could throw the ball so far. And so it created a completely different style of Griffball, which is what I was born into Griffball doing. 
was Halo 4. So I remember yeah. when they demoed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was I remember, incredible. I remember the presentation mm-hmm. that that Goose and was it Taco? Yep. Goose Taco and was it Knockyard? Yeah, it would have been Goose Taco, Knockyard, and and an H2O camper. Yeah. And it was part of a three four three panel where they showed yeah. off at mm-hmm. PAX. Was it Halo Fix or was it PAX twenty twelve? It was one of those two. Uh both. I believe that panel happened to both. Okay. But yeah. So yeah, just just to say that Griff Ball's been part of the Halo community ever since Red vs. Blue made the the joke about it. Yeah. And I'm exci- I'm excited because to see to see Halo Four, I will probably get back into competitive Griff Ball now that Halo Four is in house, and I'm just waiting for playgriffball.com to get to Finish get that Halo Three season in, and then once that's in, I'm on I'm on board. Yeah, because they're doing Halo Three currently on their PC se- PC Correct. season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting, and it'll be interesting with crossplay. As yeah, well. because we're going to finally be, we won't have to keep separating the community from PC versus Xbox. We can all just jump right in there and we've got a, that gives us a much larger, well, it gives them a much larger user base. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I spent so many years as the EP for, for Griff Ball Hub that it would be great to see the community finally come back onto a title that we know from and are familiar with because everybody like the H5 Griff Ball was so different than from H4 than yeah it was it was very it was very interesting to see that change happen competitively speaking tag to win a house what up dude he says he's gonna beat oh, your yeah, football nah. one day uh i'm gonna beat you once just unless you keep start spelling it correctly it's one f there you go <laughs> that that is something every time i see someone spell grip ball with two f's i get like tense i'm like no it's one f one one day tech though but it, f- he's australian ball. everything over there is two f's. <laughs> yeah grip f- 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 ball but <laughs> well, and Halo Four was kind of an opening for a lot of us because I know GT, you you started helping out with game nights f- with Halo Four for Potacular. Well, yeah, I kind of got ambushed into that one, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. The, the, one of one of my best <laughs> memories of Halo Four is it brought me to you guys. It brought me here to Potacular. I was looking for information about Halo Four. And I found Potacular. I started listening to Potacular, and then I started showing up at the live shows. And out of the blue, I get a message on Twitter from Dust. Hey, can you host game night tonight? And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> can you send me some maps? <laughs> It, it didn't help your case that you were one of the few that showed up every every time we we had it going. <laughs> well, I didn't see you asking pins. I think I asked him at one point. It, it, it either way, anyways. uh that's yeah, I mean that's how I got started with Potacular. Uh but yeah, I mean that's one of my greatest memories of Halo 4 is it, it got me in this community that we call Potacular. It, it's great. Yeah. And then we met up at RTX 20, geez, 2014. Yeah, there we 2014. go. For the Potacular 10 year anniversary. Mm-hmm. No, that was 2015. Sorry, 2015. Thank you. Yep, because that was my very first RTX. Yep. Is that the first time we met, or did we meet at a PAX before then? Who? You and me. Nope, we met. That was our very first time. It was my very, that was my first event ever. My okay. very first gaming convention ever, and I ended up on the main stage, the microphone, shoutcasting Griffball for uh, on Art on Rooster Teeth's channel on YouTube and Twitch in front of what twenty five thousand viewers. It was re- mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. No, that was that was astounding. Be cool. And then the next year, you were louder than the main stage. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was. I was very loud. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, good I memories. remember meeting Goose and Cal down there. Uh, I waited yeah. to DJ because he was busy. Biowolf was there. Haas was there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing like getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, loading up in the car, driving 11 hours to the uh, condo. 
the condo in Austin. Yep. Unloading, goofing around for a little bit, then driving to the airport at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> to, pick to pick up, up Biowolf. Wolf. It wasn't 11 o'clock at night. It was, it was late because we still it went back dark. and got dinner. It's summer yes, it was and dark. it's dark. So it was, it was at least 11. Yeah. Dark. It was 9, 9.30. And it was no, the it was July, was July 4th week. Was it July 4th week? No, that was in August. That one was in August. That one yeah. was in August. Because yes. it was hot. It was just, man, it was swamp level hot there. It, it, was, it was ridiculous. It was miserable during the day. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. You guys are wimps. That's average Kansas City weather. Anyway, um, we, get, we get down there and we have to go pick up Biowolf at the airport because he's flying back from Germany. Game's gone. So we get we get there. Let's see. I think we left the we left the airport probably like right at oh it had to be about nine thirty nine yeah. thirty ten o'clock. Yeah. Then we all decide it's time to go to Schlotsky's or wherever it was. Is that where we went? We yep. went Schlotsky's. We went and got sandwiches. Yeah, Schlotsky's. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, that was a sandwich yes. joint yep. right up the street. And then then you know we hung around there for two and a half hours uh, talking. Then we all did, go back did, to the Did Duquesne condo. show up there with us? I don't think Duquesne showed up. Okay, that was a later the, the later year then. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we all go back to the condo and decide we're going to record a podcast. And this is you know this is now midnight. <laughs> I thought we did the podcast the next night. No, we did the podcast. It was that the same night. night. Yes. What was what was I thinking? <laughs> I have I no know. idea. Well, all I know, know what I thought was, was interesting I was up for almost twenty four hours. <laughs> So my th- first day at my first convention was uh, uh, <laughs> zombie. Uh, uh. Oh wow! I was speaking so, uh, zombie that day. See, there you go. <laughs> well, call call this call it circle back. There you go. Uh, and I think was it like? And I know I don't know if, if Techno is still in here or not because he knows how much I love the game. But it's I remember that was also in 2015 that RTX was that summer where. At all the events, because I saw it again when I, because that was also my first PAX, because I turned right around and went from my first RTX to my very first PAX event. And I saw Rainbow Six Siege being debuted at the cons. Mm -hmm. And I got to play Rainbow Six Siege and was like, what is this? It's so crazy. And of course, then I, you know, I saw all these things. And now, of course, being a a religiously and dedicated Rainbow Six Siege player. It's interesting that that at my first con was my first experience because they were literally diagonal to us. Remember, you came in, you saw the cable booth, and then Rainbow Six Siege was here, and then the main stage was beyond it. Yep. And I, uh, I remember yeah. watching House stand in that line for like uh, an hour and a half waiting to play it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah no, nah, I'm good. Go ahead. Yep. Let me know how you, how you like it. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. As I'm walking around. Thing. Oh, oh, right. oh, yeah. No, I still had fun. The second day was a lot more fun than the first day. <laughs> yeah, I remembered more of the Gosh. second day. I, I, I feel bad for putting you through that now. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man. Oh, and on, on top of that, the mattress I had in my room was the hardest mattress I think I've ever slept on. I think the floor would have been softer. <laughs> Not to mention someone, like, broke one of the windows the last day that we were there. Oh, God, that, that about scared the wajibits out of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. They're our our condo was ground level on the main street. On the street, yeah. Yeah, well, you guys were in the same complex as us, right? As Griff House? Uh, yeah, we were just one street over. So we were one street away from the convention center from you. So you were in the next building? The next, yes. The next, yeah. yeah. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, literally people could, if we had the blinds open, people could walk by this, uh, walk by our condo and look right into our living room. Yep. Oh, well, apparently yeah. somebody punched the window or something as they were walking by. It was all we heard was glass shattering. Oh God. Yeah. And we were playing, uh, MCC at that point and <laughs> we like, we heard it and we were like, okay, people being crazy next morning, I feel a draft and see that there's broken glass. So I take a picture and I text the the landlord. It's like, 
hey, so people did this. It wasn't us. People like we heard it happen last night around 11 or whatever. And he didn't yeah. charge us for it. So that's a th- we got our Thank deposit God. back, I think. Well, that's good. So that's very yeah. good. Speaking of which, so, did you yeah. ever send me my part of the deposit back? I think I would have given it back five years ago. <laughs> I don't think I would not give it back. I'm just messing with dust. He took the deposit. <laughs> He's over here like in All panic I paid mode. for was for the room. Like, but I made him question I it. I tried to be responsible with my money. <laughs> you make me so, freak out over here. <laughs> but I, there was a lot of great Sorry, memories that came from Halo alone. Four. <laughs> I think there was a lot of great memories that came from Halo Four because it was what we had for so long. And, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, we really didn't have a whole lot of other titles that were actively being utilized. Reach was there, but it was really inundated by stat patterns. And so it was just kind of a thing where, eh, and four was, four was where we're all at. And we stayed there for a very long time. So and it was 343's three, three baby. It's like, that's yeah. what they used to foster their community. And I think that we've got that kind of ingenuity and opportunity coming at us again with Infinite. And I'm just excited for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, in time once they're ready to finally let it let it loose and yeah. uh that's all that really matters is we're just gonna be patient and in the meantime celebrate and enjoy what we've got or enjoy the other games that are coming out in the meantime and, and the, there you go and the i mean you, you touched on it earlier oh hey hayden another another hey, raid hayden. with party six our our Thanks loyal raid. raider our lo- loyal raider of the show hayden. thank you hayden nice also a rainbow six player huh no i maybe Maybe. <laughs> a rating with a party of six. I was like, I thought you said Rainbow Six. I got all excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rainbow Six rating six. <laughs> Hello there, Mini Man. Welcome to the show. Oh. Yes, we got a raid. Thank you for stopping by. Raid. What's cracking? We're talking about Halo 4 and what we yeah. love about it. Yeah. You, so you touched on this earlier, GT, and one of the things that I haven't really come to appreciate until kind of recently is just how emotional Halo 4 is. Like it the story Mm -hmm. like obviously with the Halo story with the Bungie days kind of up till Halo Reach, it was all kind of just gung ho, you are this super soldier who's you have that kind of devastation effect with the Covenant trying to come and destroy humanity, but you're still this kind of given the perceptive of Chief is a tank. He's gonna be able to fix all our problems. And then that just breaks down in Halo 4 when Cortana starts just losing well, yeah, you it. Start seeing, she... You start seeing more of the human side of Chief like you were in the books. And that's what made Halo 4's yeah. story so special. Is mm-hmm. because if you were into the extended lore, which unfortunately for Halo 4 you had to be in, that's one of the downsides, you were already starting, you already were seeing that side of Chief. You already saw the um can't think of the word now um the relationship flaws, that, the the relationship that chief was developing with cortana in the books i mean they showed it in the games and that's fine and they had the little banner that went back and forth and it was great but you saw more of the personality of chief in the books and i understand why bungie did the things the way they did they wanted you to kind of step into the step in and be the master chief. And I didn't fault them for it because the way they did it, it, they did it very well. They provided enough, enough dialogue for the chief that you kind of got a sense of what the character was. It, yeah. It kind of gave you some direction, but it wasn't exactly 4, telling you how to, to... yeah. In Halo four, yeah. we got more dialogue. I mean, I think in Halo four, Chief had more dialogue than he did in the other three games combined. <laughs> but we really got to see who John 117 was. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, it didn't take that away from me of me stepping into that armor. Yeah. Well, it kind yeah. of just played along with what we, I mean, in my opinion, what you kind of picked up on and felt while you were playing through the games anyway. So while it is kind of more defining who chief is, we kind of were already in that mindset of, of being that character. Like we, we know how the story goes. We know how chief kind of does these, these things throughout the story. 
So while the, the canned experience at the beginning was a lot more of an open shell, Bungie still kind of developed the character and the story in mm-hmm. such a way where, yeah, you, you do have that. You're trying to fill the character with, with the player, but you're still kind of moving them towards an idea of this is actually who the character is. And we want to let you gradually get into that perception and not just drop you in and say, this is the person, this is the character. We're going to let you explore the character and be the character as we develop the character. You're there with us. Yeah. Well, in Halo 3, you know, Bungie did start to open up with John's character just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we got to see a big chunk of that when he rescues Cortana. And when he talks about rescuing Cortana, you start to really see the emotion in his relationship with Cortana. And I think that's and one of the reasons how- why I love Halo 2 so much is because of the story arc that we got with the Arbiter and the yeah. conflict that he had to go through. That dynamic in Halo mm-hmm. 2 is something that I really love about Halo 2's story. Is you, you have the Chief and Cortana combo who <coughs> are going and, and saving humanity, but you have this other aspect of like the, the complete flip side of what's going on. And it's this struggle to, to like get knocked down from the top echelon and be put at the bottom, but then coming up, and then these two forces that were opposite come together and that whole story aspect was just brilliant to me for halo 2 yeah i i just i really enjoyed it it all uh when Mm -hmm. it came to halo 4 you know for 343's first game it it was a good game and i you know i said it then and i'll say it now it it was a good game yeah and exactly pens in halo 4 we we got to know john and we already knew the master chief that's a good way to put it you know, you know the 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 shell. You're you're looking at the character in that shell. That's an interesting perspective of it. We did get a couple of people who commented in Discord and uh, Prestige posted in here a little bit earlier too. If anyone in here wants to talk about what they like about Halo Four, feel free to drop it in the chat. We'll read it out here. But pins over in our Discord said Halo Four was the first midnight launch that he attended. It was a blast, even though I was one of the older people there. Everyone kept asking me if I was getting it for my kid. (laughs) It was also the game that fully drew me into the Halo community. I found Potacular just after their launch, my Spartan company, my love for the lore of Halo, and a bunch of great people I can call friends. I I found myself having great discussions about the story and aspects of the game, and even getting involved to be on the podcast to talk about, seriously though, why me? (laughs) I love the story in Halo 4 and how it made me cry when I realized at the end that for the first time as Master Chief, I lost. Wow. Yep. I'm getting agreed. just reading that right now. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Very much agreed. Halo 4 has become my favorite Halo game for what, is, for what it is and where it took me. Wow. I did not expect that to impact me as hard as it did. I'm kind of curious to see how my wife's going to react when we get to Halo 4. Because we still have to go through Halo 2, 3, and, and Reach. We've only finished one, but like I'm probably going to cry when we get to that part in Halo. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's still, always awkward. I mean, even to this day, I know it's coming. It's, you know, it's still, it still pulls on those strings. Yeah. You know, even though I know what happens afterwards, it's still that scene. And people yeah. have given 343 crap about that scene, and I don't understand why. But anyway, the just the the dialogue and the interaction between chief and Cortana in that scene. It's, 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 it's brutal. Right. Heart yeah. table. Um, you know, it's just the writing was exquisite. Yes, it was. I mean, they really did a great job with the entire story of that game. And that just, that climax to that point, it just, it really just leaves yeah. you dumbfounded. I mean, you feel just like they portrayed the Master Chief after that. Who am I? Why am I here? Yeah, yeah am your I world the machine just shattered. Or? Yeah. His world just shattered. Granted, it was degrading pretty quickly before, but he still had some semblance of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be the hero of the situation. I'm going to get yeah. Cortana back to Halsey. There's still a way out of this. 
And then that option is just and stripped then there's away. Not. Yeah. She sacrifices herself to save him. It is the most emotional scene in the entire Halo franchise. Even among the books. Mm -hmm. It's it's the most impactful like yeah. I'm choking up just thinking about it. Yeah. So Well Yeah. On that note, <clears throat> it's available now with the Master Chief Collection on PC and your Xbox. It's also available included with Xbox Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate for PC. Get your copy today. There you go. You can go over to aka.ms slash get MCC now or get Halo MCC, one of the two. You can find it. Just search for it. You, you'll find it. It's not uh, hard Pristine. to find. Huh? It said it's not hard to find. No, yeah. it's not. No, it's not. Thank you, Save K Slayer, for the follow. Welcome to the Potacular community. We've got uh, Prestige. Tad bit of a hot take, but not really. I don't really remember Halo 4 all too well when it came out. I remember hating it and saying that 3 for 3 really should have not taken over, but there's a lot of good but there is a lot of good out of it. Now that I think about it, Halo 4 isn't really that bad of a game considering the fact that it was their first game. They also brought Halo to PC. Remember, Bungie didn't even want games on PC. Only Halo was 1 and 2 was going to be on PC, did. and that was it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely gave Halo 4 a knock because of the whole didact thing and having to read the books for that. But if you look at just the Chief and Cortana story, that is... Like, there were two stories happening in that game. There was one with mm -hmm. the Didact and the Forerunners and Humanity. And the other one was Chief and Cortana. And that Chief and Cortana one is one of the best. If not the best yeah. story that we've gotten out of the Halo franchise. And it just hits you deep. Yeah, it does. And you see it coming. Or you feel it's coming. You don't necessarily see it's coming. And then when it does come, you're like, you're just, you're shattered. And it's exactly yeah. how Chief is feeling, too. So, like, you're filling that with Chief. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Halo, is the fact that you, you start with this canned character in Halo 1, and by the time you get to Halo 4, you're, you're already thinking in the mindset of Chief, and you're already invested like the characters in the franchise are. You're emotionally living in that franchise. Yeah, I, And the yeah, way they I, deliver honestly, that is Honestly, I just, was there by the end of CE. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, once I yeah. got done with CE and I heard that they were making Halo 2, I was I'm like, when can I pre-order it? Here's my money, take it. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the day that they a uh, day they launched pre-orders, man, I was at Best Buy making my pre-order. I wanted to have that game on launch day. I remember being in school when they announced it. I think it was in like spring time of of like 2003 or something like that yep so yeah i was in high school or junior high no i was in junior high dang matter of fact i bought my official guide? xbox guide to halo oh, wow. 2 that very same day wow that i pre-ordered it and i still have says he was three <laughs> yeah Wow. They That's actually incredible. had that out on the shelf before the game launched. Most guides, well, I guess nowadays most guides are out before the game launches anyways, but yeah. I just, wow. I found that weird. That that That's far, incredible. You know, I could see it, That's you know, incredible. maybe a week or so in advance, but this was like the day pre-orders opened. <laughs> so the game was still, well, see, the game was still two and a half months away. If I remember right, when pre-orders opened? That sounds about right. Wow. So Halo 4 is just... It's all kind of nostalgia for the three of us, at least. Mm -hmm. And I'm not looking yep. at it through rose-colored glasses, because it, it still gives me those same feelings when I play it today. And that's that was one of the like big times in the community as well. I know I took over the podcast in 2008, but it wasn't until 2011 when I got invited to go to halo fest and really mm -hmm. get to interact with people and meet people and start being a part of the community like legit part of the community and getting to to see halo 4 and it's kind of early stages and getting everything like all that experience just kind of wrapped up in that time frame of of halo 4 coming out in, in 2012 so that that's that was a big 
part of my Halo stuff. Obviously, Halo Three is was kind well, of the run time away I, puppy. I got involved, but it, overall, the what three four three did with Halo, as far as the franchise goes, and the storytelling, and the narrative, and even the multiplayer, like they've done some new stuff with it, and not everyone agrees with the new stuff, which is which is okay. I mean, it's not it's not everyone's preferred way of multiplayer. Okay, that's that's fine. Everyone's going to have different opinions on that. But you can't deny that what 343 has contributed to the franchise and what they've done to expand the story and put their own spin on it and really try to enhance what we've gotten from the Bungie era of Halo games is trying to just flesh out and really fill out what a video fran- game franchise could be. Yeah. Yep. And we all love it. There's all these people out there that are like three for three killed Halo or let, Halo's yeah, dead and whatever. I, I and it's even, like, yeah, it's I don't like, even have any words no. for those people. Yeah, yep. it's like I know we what love I Halo. enjoy, and I'm not saying that three four three hasn't made the missteps because they have. Even Bungie but, made missteps with Halo. No, no if studios. Bungie perfect. was left to yep. their own devices. We would have never got Halo. And we I mean, wouldn't honestly. even have, yeah, and we wouldn't even still have more Halos to talk about. You know, I, I'm just happy with the overall development that has been done with Halo 4, welcoming it, welcoming it to the PC games uh, with the Master Chief Collection. I hope that everybody takes their time. All the new people that come to the game, I hope you take time and really appreciate uh, all the work 343 has done for the Master Chief Collection and for Halo 4 because they've really busted their butts for the last couple of years getting this all taken care of. And I, I'm very happy with their pro- the product that they're putting out. And I look forward to the product that we're going to get in Halo Infinite. So, you know, it's just... Yeah, you know, I'm going to look at the positive side. There's... this This is good. Uh, and I'm happy to get with get the Master Chief Collection together again, and I look forward to the improvements that they will continue to bring to it. Well, There's browser, not many please. games. <laughs> There's not many games that you see today that have a title that is over five years long, still getting the active kind of development that MCC has been getting. And they're not done. Halo 4 is not the last thing that they're working on. They're still, they still have plans to bring more features and more capabilities and more customization to MCC. They're not done. So I, I, it's wonderful that Halo 4 is finally on PC. For those that have not had a chance to experience it yet, I hope that you are able to really get your heartstrings tugged on it just like we were when we first went through the and experienced the game, it's it means a lot to at least the three of us, and and a lot of the folks that are in the chat have have expressed their love and what they really appreciate appreciate about the game as well. So we're right. we're happy it's it's there. Cool. Sorry to take it down the emotional route, but I feel like Halo Four is a very emotional game, and it's important to highlight that oh, fact is. because it's it's a great title to the franchise. Yeah, night. thank you. Right. <laughs> oh. All right, they're oh. crying. We're wrapping it up. Jesus <laughs> Lord. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a more positive note, I guess, instead of a, a crying note, we, we do have a uh, podcast with Halopedia that we'll be recording this weekend, which will be taking place of us being off next week. Obviously, for us here in the States, it is our Thanksgiving Thursday next week, so we will not be doing a podcast. Uh, we will not be doing a live stream either. I will not be substituting that for a uh, game stream of any kind. So Thursday is completely off next week. Uh, are we planning to do Frag and Friday next week, GT, or are we going to take off then as well? Um, I think we'll probably go ahead and take next Friday off. Okay. We will be doing the COVID-friendly Thanksgiving, socially distancing by miles. So. <laughs> no, I think uh, I'm just basically go means take taking piece Friday of the turkey off. and flinging it, right? Well, we we thought about doing a drive by with a pie, but <laughs> you just get the pie launcher, you just reel it back and just let it fly. <laughs> I've got a big rubber band around here somewhere. 
There you Everybody go. Everybody celebrates oh, the holidays anyway. in their own unique way. <laughs> there you go. But All right, everybody can... be safe for the holiday weekend here in the States. Remember yes, please do. that there are things that you do need to watch out for. Be socially responsible and have a safe holiday. Yes, please. Because I'm tired of wearing a stupid mask. Also true. <laughs> yes, please respect your fellow neighbor and other people around you. Let's, let's be responsible. Let's get through this thing. More quickly than we than we have been would be nice. Anyways, you can find us over on social media: Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is where we have stuff. So just search for Podtacular and you'll find us. We have our live streams here on Twitch every Thursday at eight thirty for the podcast. Obviously not next week, but uh, we will be on the following Thursday. We also have. Our Frag and Fridays hosted by GT. We will be doing it tomorrow, as in November 20th. So not the Friday after Thanksgiving. Make sure to check out our Discord for the poll. We will be having Halo 5 on Xbox as an option and MCC, which could be any platform. Because now it's crossplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. And I'm boring GT because he's playing Space Invaders. <laughs> pew 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 pew. And you can also find us Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern, which is where I do my Achieving Halo. We will be diving into the Halo 4 challenges with the new season of challenges. We're going to be diving into the Halo 4 stuff that they've brought in. There's quite a few new things in there, so we're going to be happy to jump right into that. You can also find us on Discord, podtagular.com slash Discord. Join our Halo community. That is where the community uh, lives and breathes for us. We have our Spartan company as well. So if you want to continue our help or continue helping us to get our commendations for the Achilles helmet, you can head on over to podtacular.com slash company. I need to stop tripping over my words. And we also have our Xbox club where you can go over and share your clips and screenshots from Halo straight from your Xbox. Podtacular.com slash Xbox. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Amazon Podcasts. Just search for Podtacular in any one of those places and you should find us. If there is a podcast service that you listen to podcasts through and we are not there, please let us know and we will work to get the podcast on those services. Thank you to all of our Twitch subscribers for your just overwhelming support that you've given us this year. It has been incredible to see the subs come through and you guys have just rocked it off throughout this whole pandemic. You guys are amazing and awesome. Really appreciate all the support over there. And also shout out to our patrons as well, who have been contributing to us throughout the entire year. We are actually going to skip collection for next month uh, for the holidays as a thank you to everyone who has been faithfully giving and contributing to us through Patreon. Remember, you can head on over to podtacular.com slash Patreon and check out all the benefits that you can get by being a patron, including access to show notes, the podcast VODs, including pre- and post-show banter, which you don't get on the audio download. And at certain tiers, you get uh, certain things like being able to suggest topics for the show, being a guest on the show, and even getting some Podtacular swag. So there you go. Uh, Shoutouts to uh, Frizzled... Uh, Pins Halo and Confal and uh, Austin Weebrink for their contributions to the podcast. Appreciate all of you guys over there. You can also donate to us if you wish to do a direct monetary donation through PayPal, podtacular.com slash donate if you choose to do so. GT and DJ, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Having a feeling you guys will probably be streaming. I know DJ is going to be streaming between now and our next meeting. So, where can people find you streaming? Starting with DJ. Uh, you can find me live right here on Twitch at twitch.tv slash DJ Blue PDX. You can also hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at DJ Blue PDX. Mostly the Twitters. There you go. The tweet tweets. And thank you for the 10 bits confound. The tweet tweets, which now has fleets. Isn't that an enema? <laughs> Just the saying, whole, the whole fleet. Why'd you have to add something we didn't need? I exactly I didn't need water to go there, and yet you make a device that goes there, and you call it after that device. I'm just gonna call it Twitter enemas. Put enema. Yeah. Put enema. 
I'm going to stand it. It's more of that screen <laughs> art, screen space that I don't want consumed when I'm looking at Twitter. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yep. GT, how about yourself? <laughs> you can find me at Godzilla T on Twitch and on Twitter at Godzilla Todd. And I will, I am trying to stream more, but unfortunately life is getting in the way. Job standing on feet all day. Can't stand to sit. So <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm uh, thinking can... about getting me an up desk so I can just stand and stream. Would you I get think eventually I'll be going to one of those. Would you get an what? up desk or would you get one of those adjustable ones that you can, that you can raise and lower? Well, the up desk makes full desks that you can raise and lower. Okay, it's a brand. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to get a drop floor. You're going to get a drop floor? Yeah, so I can just make the floor go down, and then I can stand up, and I won't have to move green screens, camera angles, or anything like that. There you go. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Of course, just if need I a studio do that, that I'd rotates. Be in my base, I'd be in my garage. <laughs> That'd be yep. cool. Yeah. All right. I guess I can stand on the roof of my truck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's how you want to do it, I guess. <laughs> you can find me over at DustStorm on Twitter and Twitch. DustStormWoman7 on Facebook. I will. I stream Among Us on Saturdays with a group of friends. Jack, who some of the podcast listeners know, who's uh, working with me to produce the Halo Mole. Some of his friends and some other friends that we know from Halo way back in the Halo 2 Vista days. Uh, we get on and play Among Us every Saturday. And um, you might see me hop on some other games with, with DJ. I, I usually try to hop on a few games with him on his streams, so you might find me over there as well. Absolutely. So, everyone, please, I'll, I'll echo GT sentiment. Please be safe. Please enjoy your Thanksgivings, whether it is uh, socially distanced with family or whether you're spending the time on your own. We are thankful for everyone here, and we hope that you are going to enjoy the holiday and we will see you in a couple of weeks keep on fragging them trucks everybody <laughs>